Blog Talk Radio. Round one. Fight, 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 fight. Minions, welcome. You have stumbled across the number one internet sports talk show in the world. My name is Tom Mark Wassell, Presidente, and you will pay homage to me for the next two hours because I am on loan from God to bring you the best knowledge in sports there is. 917-889-8516 is our digits. Our, our executive producer, Rick Riggin, is standing by in the balance war room. Today's special, 30, the field of 33. I tell you what, it's been exciting. We teamed up with Speedway Digest out at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and we have been out there all month long. And it has been exciting. Now, also, Matthew Embry hung out with me on bump day out at the uh, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And uh, so we saw a lot of things, a lot of drama going on today. Myself, our official IndyCar contributor, Matthew Embry from Popular Open Wheel Now, uh, will join us as well as Tyson Lautenschlager, our favorite Canadian from OnPitRoad.com. We're going to break down all 33 cars. Got a lot of special stuff on 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 tap for you. Uh, we do this every year on the day before the 500. Uh, 33 cars. That's our special today. My name is Saul Mark Wassell, Presidente. Stick around. It's about to get good right here on the Balance Radio Network. My doctor told me to reduce stress at work, so I come to Buffalo Wild Wings to eat lunch and watch sports. I get to pick one of seven entrees, like sandwiches and salads, plus one of seven sides. Well, I like sides. It's so affordable, I can finally take a vacation. Where are you going to go? Here, Tim. Here. Introducing the new Beat Up Fast Break Lunch Menu, starting at a new low price. Dine in or order takeout weekdays between 11 and 2. Participation and availability may vary. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. It's double trouble, double the fun. At African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio, see the largest antelope on Earth, the giant ewa, and the ugliest creature on Earth, the African warthog. There's so much to see and do, including the Midwest's only drive through safari. See the animals. See live educational shows. Feel the excitement. Have your picture taken with a python or cockatoo. Feel the adventure. Shop the Simba Lodge gift shop with items available from around the globe. Visit the snack bar or picnic facilities. Enjoy a pony or camel ride. Or cheer your favorite porker on to victory in the famous Pork Chop Down. Bring your family to see the rare and exotic animals at African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio. Just take Route 2 to the Route 53 North exit and follow the sign. Only 17 miles west of Cedar Point via Route 6. Open every day, rain or shine. Auto Racing History. Andy Granatelli's STP Racing Team wins the sport's two biggest events in a single season. First, Richard Petty takes the Daytona 500, NASCAR's premier stock car race. Then Gordon Johncock wins the granddaddy of them all, USAC Indy 500. Though the style of racing is very different, Petty and 
John Cock had two things in common. STP oil treatment and the STP double oil filter. Both men gave their engine the edge against friction and wear with STP oil treatment. And both got filter in a filter protection against sludge and abrasives with the STP double oil filter. Get the same history-making combination for your family car. STP oil treatment and the STP double oil filter. Away, AJ Card Day at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is annually the Midwest's biggest springtime party off track, but there was plenty of exciting action on track just two days before the greatest spectacle in racing. Festivities kicked off Friday with the final one-hour practice session for the 33 starters of the 102nd Indianapolis 500 with conditions very similar to what drivers should expect on a warm race day on Sunday. It's been a remarkably clean month of May for Danica Patrick, but mechanical gremlins forced her to gasoline alley at the midway point of the final practice. Thankfully for Danica fans, her team would get that GoDaddy Chevrolet back on track and she'd end the session eighth fastest. Indy 500 veterans dominated the speed charts in the final practice as Tony Kanaan, Scott Dixon, and Marco Andretti ended the day as the three fastest on track. The future stars of the Verizon IndyCar Series got to showcase their talents on car day with the annual Freedom 100 for the Indy Light Series presented by Cooper Tires. In one of the most competitive races in Light's history, the record for lead changes was shattered as drivers like Dalton Kellett, Pato Award, Santi Arufia, and Colton Herta set the new mark at 20 lead changes in the 40-lap race. In the end, second-generation driver Colton Herta was able to fend off a great challenge by teammate Pato Award, scoring the victory by half a car to pick up the win in the Freedom 100 and take over the points lead in Indy Lights. And before race fans could rock out with Train and Blues Traveler, the unsung heroes on the IndyCar pit crews got a chance to shine in the annual Indy 500 Pit Stop Challenge. Despite not qualifying for the race, James Hinchcliffe's Aero Electronics team were fast, knocking out Will Power's Verizon Team Penske crew in the first semifinal. The Schmidt-Peterson crew would get to square off in the finals with the Ganassi PNC Bank crew for Scott Dixon, who knocked off the Napa crew of Alexander Rossi for Andretti Autosport. In the finals, Ganassi's Wolfpack would not be denied winning the best of three round over the Schmidt crew to claim the title. Watch the 102nd running of the Indianapolis 500, Sunday, May 27th at 11 a.m. on ABC. Give me fuel, give me fire, give me that which I desire. Ooh. And welcome back, my minions. My name is Sal Mark Vassell, Presidente. 917 8516 is my digits. It is the field of 33. Joining us now is Matthew Embry of Popular Open Wheel Now and Tyson Lotzeiger of OnPitRoad.com. How are you doing, Matthew? Good stuff. We should mention, in addition to all the stuff on television, uh, the local affiliate 1070 of the fan today will have a marathon of Indy 560. They'll have re- highlights of several prominent Indy 500s over an hour, plus uh, commentary from uh, Donald Davidson. And then, of course, their coverage gets underway at 5 a.m. and will run all the way through the end of the race, plus a two-hour post-race show. So a lot of stuff going on, not just on the uh, old tube, but on the radio as well. And uh, what an interesting race and a lot to look forward to. And uh, like I said, uh, first of all, i got to say, you know, I feel bad for Ty. I mean, his buddy uh, Hinch is going to be in the show this year. But uh, I tell you what, it's been a very weird month and uh, very interesting scenarios uh, playing into this race. Uh, the way it's going, Tom, the way this month is, I spell an upset. Well, absolutely. It's going to be very exciting. Joining us also is Tyson Lautenschlager of uh, OnPitRoad.com, uh, uh, giving us a call today and helping us break down the field of 33. Uh, Tyson, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. Uh, you know, as Matt said, you know, we are missing one Canadian in the Indy 500 field this year, but it's race weekend, so it's always a good weekend. You know, we're, we're going to get into that here in just a moment, but I, I wanted to make sure that I, I, I've always been a fan of James Hinchcliffe, and, and he's always held himself with great class, uh, certainly as all Canadians do. Uh, but the, the fact is, he's one of the fan favorites, and 
honestly, on t- we we got the the tale of two cities here. One one part of us we always love a a good uh, bump day. I mean, we haven't had one in years. And I don't know that anybody, and I don't mean this bad against Pippa Man, but I don't think anybody really expected Pippa Man to get into it. So it wasn't really a big shocker. The shocker came when James Hinchcliffe. Mechanical problems, things happen. That's Indy. Uh, Indy shows uh, favorites to no one. Uh, just was not able to get into the race. Now, they could have moved him into the other car of, of Schmidt Motorsports. They could have done that. They could have made the business decision to do that. Sponsors uh, trump all. But, you know, at the end of the day, they didn't do that. And, and James Hinchcliffe, uh, you may have seen his tweet and his Instagram uh, and his post saying, you know, hey, it just wasn't our day. We didn't get the job done, and I'm going to support my team. So hats off to James Hinchcliffe. Uh, did it in a, in a great, great way. Uh, real quickly, guys, as you know, the Indianapolis 500 is a tradition. It is something that is that if, if, you're, if you're not a race fan, you can still enjoy the Indianapolis 500. I was out at Carb Day yesterday. A, a big party scene, everybody. I, I can't tell you how many times people said, well, I'm just here for the party. You know, a quarter of the day was beer and titties. So, <laughs> you know, so the party scene is there. But then you've got the on-track action, the pit stop action. And speaking of James Hinchcliffe, did a great job coming right up to the end uh, with uh, um, – Scott Dixon, who Scott Dixon has a knack of winning the, the pit, cha- uh, pit stop challenge uh, with his uh, Chip Canassi racing uh, team out there. So a lot, of, a lot of traditions. Carb Day is one of those traditions. Um, let me ask you this. We'll go around the horn here real quickly. Uh, Matthew, what, what, what is it about the Indianapolis 500 that makes it special to you personally as a race fan? Well, it's the history and the chance to really make, win one of the toughest and most challenging races in the world. I mean, a lot of people have given this race flack since the split uh, back in 96, but it takes a lot of guts, it takes a lot of bravery, a lot of courage, and a lot of things to have to go your way in order to win this race. We have seen many times, we've seen Michael Andretti dominate this race. He didn't win. We saw Lloyd Ruby dominate this race. He never won. There are many big names. Even Tony Stewart tried to win this race, never won. So, I mean, there's a lot of big names here, but things have got to go your way in order to get all the way there. I mean, look at last year. Takuba Sato had a good start of the race, had a law period, fell back after stalling the car at a pit stop, came all the way back and what? Uh, it's going to be very interesting to see how things play out this time around. But like I said, Lady Luck plays a big deal, and if you don't have the luck and the brakes fall your way tomorrow – you're going to have a very tough time because, remember, this car, even though people say that things haven't changed, it could be a lot tougher to gain positions. And for guys like Alexander Rossi and Graham Rahal, who are starting 32nd and 30th respectively, they have a mountain to climb, and they could have to take some very interesting off-secret strategies to get themselves into the picture because they can't just rely on other people's mistakes to get there. Sure, we had a lot of attrition last year, but – with this brand new car, the way it's been, attrition has not been a factor as it has been, you know, in the 80s and 90s. You've got to make it on your own, and I think ultimately, uh, for those guys, they're going to have to do some interesting strategies to get themselves into the picture for what's been uh, surprising positions, especially for Rossi, uh, the guy that just two years ago won this race. Yeah, absolutely. And we're going to get into all of the cars here in just a moment. Uh, Tyson, real quickly, what is it about the Indianapolis 500 that makes it special to you personally as a fan? Well, I think um, kind of like Matt said, it, it is the history. This is the biggest race of the year, you know, across all motorsports, in my opinion. And uh, kind of to echo that, I saw a tweet this morning from Jim Noble, one of the, the NASCAR media people, and he uh, he tweeted you know, all of these NASCAR, big NASCAR media people, Bob Pockers, Jeff Gluck, uh, Nate Ryan, Jenna Fryer, they're all at Indy this week. We also have the Coca-Cola 600 tomorrow, which is, is the same day, of course, as the Monaco GP and the Indy 500. But the fact is, all three of these races are big, but the Indy 500 is just bigger than everything. And it really is the one that, that everybody wants to be at. Coke 600 is kind of just another race to a lot of people, especially when you do compare it with Indy. So I think that's why, to me, that's one of the biggest races that probably the biggest race that any series runs uh, throughout the year. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, me personally, 